After the Sex Pistols implosion in 1978 during a tour across America, it seemed highly unlikely the band would ever reunite, especially given that bassist Sid Vicious would pass away not too long after the band broke up. Their tour across America was a complete disaster. Rather than playing major metropolitan hubs of the East and West Coast, manager Malcolm McLaren booked dates across the South because he knew the crowds would be hostile. Couple that with infighting, fights with crowds and photographers, Sid Vicious's drug addiction, and it was a powder keg that was ready to explode. Sure enough, it came to a head in January of 1978 during the band's final show in San Francisco with frontman Johnny Rotten famously telling the crowd, Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? Soon enough the band was done, and the following year bassist Sid Vicious would pass away, and the remaining members would find new musical projects. In fact, I've done a whole video on the ghost of Sid Vicious at the Chelsea Hotel. The link is down below. Following the breakup, John Lydon would go on to found Public Image Limited, while drummer Paul Cook and guitar Steve Jones started the band The Professionals. But almost two decades after the band's implosion, the remaining members of the Sex Pistols announced their reunion. So, how did this happen? That's what we're going to explore in today's video. On March 16, 1996, a press conference was held in London at the 100 Club, where the Sex Pistols announced their reunion. While a lot of bands don't like to say money was a motivating factor in them reuniting, the Sex Pistols were pretty blunt about it. John Lydon would tell reporters, We found a common cause and that's your money. Not much has changed. Through the years we've all gone off and done different things, and left it up to others to go make waves. Nobody out there has done bollocks all to change this world. So hello, here it is, part two. And quite frankly, the Sex Pistols never really finished properly, and that's what this is all about, he'd say. Replacing Sid Vicious would be the band's original bassist Glenn Matlock. During the press conference, Matlock revealed how the members still, and I quote, hated each other with a vengeance, while Lydon claimed he vacuumed Sid Vicious's ashes. Things got a little bit tense during the press conference when one reporter questioned the band about the reunion, claiming it was a stark reversal for the punk rock group, as Lydon in the past claimed there was no reunion possible without Sid Vicious. Lydon responded to this reporter saying, We invented punk, we write the rules and you follow, not the other way around. These are the original members. Sid was nothing more than an empty coat hanger to fill an empty spot on stage, you'd say. Dubbed the Filthy Looker Tour, the band played 78 dates across Europe, North America, and South America, and it would turn out to be a huge success, raking in over $20 million. The band did their best to avoid any complications or infighting that could derail the lucrative tour, going as far as to travel in separate buses, stay in different hotels, and even take different planes. The Filthy Looker Tour was a pretty stark contrast to their past. Following their final show in San Francisco in 1978, the band was supposed to travel overseas to do a tour of Scandinavia, but members of the public in Finland started to panic and lobbied the government to ban the musicians from entering the country, declaring them unwanted visitors, which is something that's usually reserved for people who are considered terrorists or criminals. But funny enough, to kick off their Filthy Looker tour, the band's first shows would happen in Finland in June of 1996. That's not to say that the crowd were fans of them, in fact, they were anything but. They were playing the Masella Festival, and they were booed and hit with rocks and bottles of urine. But they would eventually be convinced to come back on stage and finish their set. That wasn't the only show where the Pistols had some trouble. They walked off stage after only five songs during a performance at the Roskilde Festival, after fans started pelting them with objects. Despite the tour's success though, guitarist Steve Jones would tell the New York Daily News, We've done reunions in the past, we did a big one in 1996, we did a hundred shows, made a bit of dough, but we wanted to off ourselves at the end. We really don't make enough to put up with each other. While John Lydon would reveal to Billboard a year following the tour, that the band members' behavior towards one another hadn't really changed from the old days, and he claimed after the band's last show in Chile, no one even said goodbye to one another. In the same interview, Lydon would claim that he needed the extra cash from the reunion tour to help finish his solo debut record, Psycho's Path, for Virgin Records. The band would put out a live record from the reunion tour titled Filthy Looker Live, but it failed to crack the album charts in America. There was even talk of the band recording new music in 1996, with bassist Glenn Matlock telling Enemy, back in 1996 there was a bit of talk about it. Me, Steve Jones, and Paul Cook wanted to, but John Lydon thought shy of it. I don't know why. Maybe he thought stuff that he'd written didn't match up to the past and that the band's legacy might be diminished by it somehow, he'd recall. The Sex Pistols would end up reuniting twice more in 2002 and 2007, but whether we see another reunion remains highly unlikely or up in the air depending on who you ask. In 2012, Lydon didn't completely close the door on a reunion telling Rolling Stone, 
I love singing them old songs because they're very poignant and a very pertinent part of history that belongs to the Sex Pistols. If I write new songs, it's public image limited, then that's it. Occasionally a reenactment is a fine thing. I love Civil War reenactments, he'd say. While drummer Paul Cook would tell Enemy as recently as last year, I can't see it happening again for the Pistols. With guitar Steve Jones telling Rolling Stone in 2017, our marriage went wrong and we got divorced, adding that he has not spoken to Leiden since 2008 and claimed the only way the band would reunite is if they were making the same amount of money as the Rolling Stones. Personally, I doubt that's ever going to happen. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments section below. Did you guys go and watch any of the 1996 reunion shows or 2002 or 2007 shows? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, if you have suggestions for future topics, use the Google form down below and let us know what you'd like to see on our channel. Take care.